Hi, good morning. It is Ashley James with Good Morning Maryland. So happy to have you on this Facebook Live, our November Facebook Live with GMC. We always have these great topics. And today we have Jana Wolf back again. We love talking to her. She is the Director of Nutrition and a Registered Dietitian for the GBMC Comprehensive Obesity Management Program. And what we're talking about today is something I think we all can relate to it is uh, about holiday eating and holiday nutrition. And, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I know that I feel like I pack on like a good five pounds at least over the holidays. I can't seem to stop myself from eating all the goodies on the table. So we're going to talk a lot about ways to avoid adding the weight around the holidays, some recipes, what's better, what's worse, and all that good stuff. So, hey, if you have any questions for Jana, write to us now. I'll ask her while we have her here. So this is a great time to get all our questions answered. So, hey, Jana, good morning. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so excited. Of oh, course, we love talking to you. Okay. So I told you, I, you know, I feel like every holiday I put on like five to 10 pounds. That's how it feels. Mm -hmm. I'm not alone though, right? No, this is very typical. So Study after study has shown that around this time, most people will gain about five pounds, just like you said, but that this time is a little bit different because it's the moment, this moment is the time that we um, <clears throat> kind of stick with those five pounds. And those are the five pounds that stay with us over the years. So if every year you're gaining another five pounds and just keeping it on, then that could be somewhat worrisome for our overall health. So I'm thinking, you know, instead of making goals, because everyone makes a goal around the holidays to lose weight or whatever it might be, instead of making goals number based, how about we make them action based, increasing our exercise, increasing our fruits and vegetables, practicing mindful eating, like slowing down and actually enjoying and savoring our food. Why can't we do more stuff like that? And then the numbers will follow. Yeah, mindful eating. I've heard a lot about that. And I've certainly caught myself just like shoving things in my mouth and taking a minute to be like, why, what did I just do? Like I, right. did I black out while I was eating the black out moments. Right. Yeah. And I do think there's something behind this mindful eating. Talk about what that, what that is. Right. So a mindful eating is the slowing down and getting in tune with our body and understanding our hunger signals and our satiety signals. So our fullness and um, satisfaction signals, like when we're eating. There are plenty of hunger scales online. If you just Googled like a hunger scale zero to 10, you want to be somewhere between a four and a seven, which is like slightly hungry, feeling like you can eat and seven, which is like, I'm good. I'm satisfied. And the only way to approach mindful eating is to have your breakfast, lunch and dinner and to not save all your calories till the meal so that you're starving and famished by the time you get there. I mean, does this sound familiar? I know so many of my patients, they just save everything. They don't eat anything during the day, get to the meal and all of a sudden, boom, they're overeating and they can't even think until you get your blood sugar back up. Yeah, it's so true. Do you think um, uh, avoidance or moderation is better to keep you on track when it comes mm -hmm. to not overindulging? Yeah, I, it's interesting. I think everyone's so different. So for some people, they're like, you know what, I'd rather just stay away from the desserts and that'll make me feel like I'm more on track and have a little bit more control. And then others really want to actually have a little bit here and there. And to me in particular, and if you ask any other dietitian, we're going to say that moderation is the best approach because when you restrict too much and you deny yourself the forbidden foods, then you get into something called the dieting cycle. And I know plenty of people that have been in the dieting cycle where you restrict, you feel bad, you, oh my God, overeat at one point, And then all of a sudden you feel bad again. And then you start restricting and it just goes into this cyclic pattern of restriction overindulging, restriction right. overindulging. So I sort of wonder if this year will be different for people or if in other ways it'll even be harder because I was thinking today, okay, well, a lot of people aren't coming into the office, so we're not having these potlucks, we're not having these people bring in all the desserts. On the other hand, you've, hear, you've heard a ton of people say that they've been gaining weight during COVID because you're in your house more and you're just snacking and doing all maybe you're baking because it's the holiday. So I, it'll be interesting to see. I'm sort of wondering like what you guys are thinking for the holidays this year with COVID. Right. Um, so what's 
Nice. And yeah, there's like two sides, of course, to everything. Um, you know, we can't overindulge at our own home because we're like in the home all the time and there's the kitchen and blah, blah, blah. But um, we're not getting together for these big dinners potentially. So um, you can make actually smaller amounts for yourself and really pick and choose what you're in it for. You know, for me, I'm always in it for the stuffing. That's what I always want. Right. And so I wouldn't really probably make the sweet potato with the melted marshmallow on top because that's not what I'm in it for. So maybe if it's a smaller gathering, then you could just make a couple of things, call it a day and maybe do more of like, you know, if you're doing a Zoom or something, do a recipe exchange, you know, eat with your family over Zoom, maybe have like a shared photo album that you can look through photos together and, you know, uh, go through memories and why you're thankful for each other. I mean, there's no better time right now than to just talk about why we're thankful for anything yeah. um, and for our health in general. And then maybe really trying to practice that mindfulness, slowing down, staying hydrated, really savoring each bite and having more of a balanced plate. So yeah. think of it this way. I always use the my plate, um, like the, the my plate um, map, if you will. Um, half of the plate is vegetables, non-starchy veggies. A fourth of it is a lean protein. And then the other fourth is whatever you kind of want. Um, you know, this is a good way to keep yourself full, to have a balanced meal and to stop when you're actually satisfied. So just a couple of tips there mm -hmm. for that. So we have some questions that were already um, sent in. Someone wanted to know, uh, is there a better alcohol option? For mm -hmm. So um, alcohol is alcohol, but there are of course mixers that you would put into alcohol that are high in sugar. Um, so instead of like a margarita mixer, maybe having one glass of wine or um, maybe some bubbly soda with like a splash of fruit juice, and um, whatever, however much alcohol you wanted. I also have a one-to-one -one rule. Anytime you have one drink, you have at least one glass of water or sparkling seltzer, and that'll keep you hydrated. Also eat before you drink. So having a limit for yourself, like I'll have two drinks tonight and making sure you follow the one-to-one -one rule and eating ahead of time will likely keep you feeling better the next day and keep you feeling better that night so that you're not overindulging because oops, I got too hungry. I didn't eat enough. And now I'm really super hungry from the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Is there one drink that's better for you than the other? I've always heard people talk like, oh, a tequila and soda is the best or low fat or I don't know. Is there is there one that's really better or no. All alcohol um, per gram is seven calories. I mean, so it's the amount like we can have more beer for the same amount of for the same amount of alcohol and calories as like, you know, a small amount of like a shot of alcohol. It's honestly, I, I wouldn't say that one has more benefits than the other. Um, maybe a glass of red wine over like vodka for you might be a better choice or having a clear liquor over a darker liquor might be a better choice for you. Um, or if you're gluten sensitive, maybe not having a full glass of beer would be better. But, you know, again, one gram of alcohol equals seven calories. So it's pretty much similar across the board. So Jana, part of the fun of the holidays is trying out new recipes, baking new things. Is there mm -hmm. a better source out there for us that can help us with finding healthier holiday recipes? Still fun sure. Yeah, I, I always go to, I like Skinny Taste. Um, they have like lower fat or lower calorie options. Also just um, for general recipes, New York Times has excellent recipes and just the basics of, you know, if you wanna learn how to cook something um, mm -hmm. in general. Food Network, Tasty, and um, a really good resource for us as dietitians and for the general population is eatright.org. Right title. Now, is Tasty the one that sometimes pops up on your Facebook, or and they're really quick and and pretty simple, yes. right? Those yes, guys, that's why I like them. <laughs> okay, um, so I guess you know we don't want to talk about going to a party right now because you might not, but you can still enjoy with the you know the folks in your household. Um, so if you one day when we can go to a party and bring an appetizer, or if you're just cooking for the kids, um, can you tell us some go-to healthy appetizers? Well, one, there was one that my friend made recently that I absolutely loved, um, and she shared it with me. It was a zucchini fry with a um, 
with a yogurt dip. So the zucchini was just like cut thinly and you bread it and you can air fry it or you can put it into the oven with some olive oil. And then they're more like fries and you just dip them into a Greek yogurt dressing. Um, or, or like little mini turkey meatballs with some cranberries um, and maybe like, you know, almost like a take on the um, turkey with cranberry sauce. Um, and just veg veggies in general with a dip or some nice cheese, you know? Yeah. Whole, whole grain crackers. Somebody gave me a good recipe, and so I'll ask you about it because it's really simple, but you'll have to tell me the truth that this could be sure. a healthy recipe. So it was the prosciutto, so the Italian ham. So the mm -hmm. it was prosciutto, goat, cheese inside, and asparagus, and you just wrap it together and, and heat it. What are your thoughts? So this is an interesting one because the goat cheese is high in saturated fat. The prosciutto is high in saturated fat. The asparagus, well, it's just asparagus. It's great for you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if you're on a maybe lower, um, like a lower carbohydrate diet, this would be a really great option. Um, if you're just having one or two, this would be a great option regardless. So, again, with the mindfulness and eating, yeah. it's almost like everything can fit. It doesn't really matter what yeah. it is. Everything can fit. It's just the size and the amount. Gotcha. Of the puzzle piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Good to know. So we had a question come in. Melanie asks, let's talk lack of weight loss. No matter how good I have been eating, I can't seem to lose any weight. I've started walking daily, not eating late at night and eating more healthy. Any other tips? Well, first off, see a dietitian. Um, you can find dietitians on eatright.org in your area, and they can help you to really break down and peel the onion of why that might be happening. You know, is it something else? Maybe something in your labs or something hormonally, or maybe just keeping consistent. Maybe we don't realize what we're eating all the time, and they can collect food logs from you. Um, I would say keeping a food log is a great way to get data on yourself and just to see where you're at in terms of your calorie counts, uh, fat counts, carb counts, protein. Um, and it, it, instead of going crazy over the, again, the number on the scale, we don't wear a number on our body. We wear our body. So in terms of exercise and eating healthier, these things take time. We've always been told lose weight fast, but that is not true. And it will not happen quickly if you're not in a caloric deficit. So, you know, potentially, we might want to look at the calories there. Um, also, if anyone is wondering about, because I, I work for a weight loss surgery center at GBMC, I work for the Comprehensive Obesity Management Program, and we are still seeing patients. Um, so we our, our entire office is 100% virtual, and you can actually go on to gbmc.org slash weight loss, and just look into the program, see what we offer, and, um, you know, you, you basically, it's an easy, quick start, um, fill out the paperwork and, you know, we'll meet you and you'll see if it's a good fit. Great. Another question that came in, are there any foods that we definitely should avoid? Um, I would say in general, and this is always what I say, and I almost feel embarrassed. Like I don't have a lot of foods that I would say absolutely take off the table, never, ever, ever eat them. Um, because again, everything can fit. But if you really want to limit fast foods, like McDonald's, Wendy's, Taco Bell, those kinds of foods, trans fats that you can find in um, like bake, baked goods that are processed, um, and also like fried foods in general, especially like battered and deep fried foods, I would really severely limit those if possible. And just snack foods in general, cookies, cake, candy, chips, those things should be definitely eaten in moderation. No, I didn't hear you mention Chick-fil-A, so I'm just wondering <laughs> if that was also grouped into that. <laughs> well, Chick-fil-A happens to have a couple of healthy options, right? Oh, okay. So they have like the grilled chicken nuggets and the salads and everything. But again, if you just want one of their sandwiches every so often, yeah. that can fit. Um, every so often has a different meaning for everyone. So if your every so often is once a day or once a week, that is usually not what I'm talking about. It's sure. usually once every few weeks or, or months. Yeah, um, but their grilled nuggets are actually very, very good. Um, they are. Another question, Jana, can you tell us about um, the event on December 17th? Yes. So we typically have um, an in-person event for all of our patients. And this year we are going 
global. We have a 2020 weight loss surgery extravaganza called Dream, and we are exactly one month away from it. So on December 17th at 8 p.m., I want you guys to join us. Everyone is welcome. Um, this is a celebration to honor weight loss surgery and our patients and everyone involved in weight man in the weight management field. So um, what you guys can do to get involved is just like the Facebook page, 2020 Weight Loss Surgery Extravaganza colon dream. It's right there. You can see it. And um, we will be engaging with patients. You're going to see before and after pictures, really awesome stories. And I'm going to have a group of other dietitians that are helping me out to answer questions and to engage participation. So I'm really excited about this. It's going to be different this year. That's an awesome event. All right. Well, thanks for sharing about that. You know, so these are obviously some people who have who have gone through weight loss surgery, have worked with you guys. And um, talk a little bit about who uh, best fits sort of the mold of like coming in and being a patient of yours. And and when is the right time to seek professional help for losing weight? Absolutely. Um it's honestly a personal decision, but to qualify for weight loss surgery, you need to be at a 35 BMI or higher, usually with a comorbidity if you're from 35 to 40 BMI or just a 45, 40 BMI or over. Um, if you have always had issues with overeating, overindulging, um, maybe loss of control with your eating, um, if you've really had trouble losing weight over the over the years, it's time. Or you can use it as a preventive measure. You know, if you don't have diabetes but you are overweight, then this might be a good time to get the weight loss surgery to prevent the further course of diabetes, um, especially if you have a comorbidity like hypertension, diabetes, sleep apnea, this would be an excellent choice. It's one of the number one ways to lose weight and to keep it off. As far as um, exercise goes, uh, do we need something really intense during the day? I mean, what are some of the best, you know, some of the best exercises or what do you recommend for yes. people every day? Okay, great question because we are we are in one of these societies where we're just sitting all day, right? Most of us, some of us are on our feet all day, but a lot of us are just sitting. So even just getting up every half an hour, standing, just standing, doesn't matter. Um, even right now, we can all just stand up, you know, and just move our body a little bit. And then at least having 150 to 300 minutes of um, good intense workout every week is always, you know, appropriate. And potentially that for you or for anyone else might look like a half an hour per day of just movement in general. Um, it's always recommended to increase your heart rate for your cardio health um, and to lift some weights for your muscular health. And lifting weights maybe two to three times a week is excellent for anyone that wants to increase their strength and improve their health overall. What have you been seeing in this COVID world we're living in? Um, people are certainly spending more time at home, but that also comes a lot more distraction with the kids and, and virtual learning. I do you find that patients are having um, a harder time sort of getting that exercise in. Yes, this is this is probably the hardest time that I've seen for my own patients. Um, a lot of people are having a little bit of weight gain to begin with. So that in and of itself is a deterrence from actually exercising because you're like, oh, gosh, it's happening again. Um, but honestly, if you can find yourself a good app or go onto YouTube and find some dance classes. Um, I particularly like the Peloton app. That one has all different types of workouts. It doesn't matter if you have a bike or not. Um, and then you have this awesome community, anything with a community where they are telling you what to do and you don't have to think about it, that's gonna be the best. And just getting yourself a little bit of equipment, like a yoga mat, a few um, weights to, to handle and, um, you know, the, the only problem is, is if you're in like I'm, I'm in a row home and you have neighbors. And if you're jumping around, mm -hmm. that's where it can get a little bit dicey because then, you know, the fans shaking downstairs. But um, if you find a time to do it where it's not going to bother anyone, that's really what you can set yourself up for success in terms of like having a routine, finding a similar time of day each day to do something 30 minutes. Now, there are so many diets out there, and I know you've heard of all of them. There's probably too many. Mm -hmm. now. Um, is there one, I mean, do diets work for some people? I 
or is it really just as simple as eating right, exercising, sort of yeah. all as? Um, I know like keto is a big one right now. I see a ton of people um, doing keto. You have, uh, I guess, Weight Watchers out there still, you know, all, all those types of things. Are they beneficial if they work? And like, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, there's two ways to think of it. Is the, is the definition of success for a diet to work immediately and to have you lose weight in a short period of time? Or is it to keep the weight off long term? That's the question. You know, all diets work if you're in a calorie deficit, if you're increasing your protein, limiting your carbs, or vice versa. I mean, it doesn't matter how you reroute the ma macronutrients. If you're on a diet, it is likely going to work short term. The idea, though, is to not be on a diet short term so you're not in this cycle of going up, down, up, down, up, down. The body does not like that. You want to be more consistent and do something where you can meet yourself in the middle, have a little bit of flexibility, but be consistent with it long term. So, you know, if, if keto is not something that you can do long term, don't even start it because then you're going to get into that shame based cycle of, oh, my goodness, I messed up. Now I'm going to eat what I want. Now I feel like I have to restrict again. No, this is this is not good. And this is what people make money off of. Mm -hmm. So anytime you go onto Instagram or social media or anything like that, and they're trying to sell you something right. for quicker weight loss, just be skeptical. Okay, good advice. But then, but then how do you actually eat? Having, having balanced meals throughout the day, managing your blood sugar throughout the day, and making sure that you're not taking out like big chunks of types of foods. You know, I would say have your vegetables, have your lean proteins, have your whole grains or your starch, you know, your healthier starches. And that can be a nice, healthy plate for you. Obviously, it's so important to drink water. And we know that. But, you know, I, I for the most part, do drink all water. But there are just days where I'm like, I need something other than water. And I never really yeah. know what is a good alternative, what you know, obviously you don't want to drink soda, but what are some drinks out there that you would recommend if you just need a break from water? Yeah, um, there's definitely like some stevia based drinks or monk fruit based drinks. Um, Crystal Light Pure or True Lemon is a really good one. And those are sugar free or you could just do like some um, soda water with a splash of <clears throat> with a splash of 100 percent fruit juice. Or you could take actual 100 percent fruit juice and put them into little ice cubes and then throw them into your water with some other fruit if you want to. Those are some options that aren't really calorically dense um, and they'll give you that sort of like spritz that you want. Very good. Well, Janet, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I feel like we always learn so much and get great tips. Um, so that event, uh, you, there is a link to register um, on this feed. So you can see it there. And also we have it up on our screen more about the event in December. It's December 17th, correct? December 17th, exactly one month from now, 8 p.m. Go to the page, register and like the page and start interacting. Great. All right. Well, Jana, thank you so much. Have a great holiday. And um, hopefully, you know, people will start looking at those recipes. I, I know I'll check them out. All the all the uh, the tips you gave us for places to to find oh. the recipes. Thank you so much, Ashley. It's always so much fun. I know we love chatting mm -hmm. with you. All right, Jana, thank you so much. And thank you guys for tuning in. GBMC is always great at answering questions. So if you have any questions um, after this aired live, you can always ask them um, on the post. And we will see you back here next month for our December Facebook Live. So thank you again. We'll see you next time.